Anodizing is a process that utilizes both electricity and chemistry to convert the surface of aluminum to aluminum oxide, a significantly harder surface than aluminum. In fact, aluminum oxide is the second hardest substance on Earth next to diamonds. Anodized aluminum is 100% recyclable and it can be found on various architectural building components with significant presence in storefront systems where hardness and wear protection are vital. LineTech has three fully automated anodized lines that can process material up to 30 feet long. The anodized process, with its seven distinct process steps, takes an hour and a half to complete. The first step in the anodized process is to rack the aluminum material. Multiple racking methods are used depending on material type and requirements. The most common racking techniques used at LineTech are weld, bolt, and clamp. Regardless of racking method, it is critical that the aluminum is held tightly and have a significant electrical contact throughout the process. Once material has been racked, rack tags are created from LineTech's order processing software. The rack tag is attached to the rack and placed in a queue. When the rack is ready to be processed, racks are loaded on a conductive load bar. The rack tag is then scanned into the automated anodized system. The automation begins when a crane retrieves the load from the queue and places it in the first process bath, step one. This is a cleaning bath used to remove impurities from the surface of aluminum. Once clean, the load is moved to a rinse bath. Step two is an acid bath. This bath contains fluorides that attack the surface of the aluminum, creating a microscopically rough surface that helps to mask dye lines and other surface imperfections. The material is then sent to the next rinse bath. Step three removes the fluoride left on the aluminum from the acid etch bath. This is accomplished in a short time and the load is moved to the next rinse tank. Step four is the deox bath. The aluminum being anodized contains alloying elements such as silicon and magnesium. Most of these elements are not soluble in the etch bath and must be removed from the aluminum prior to anodizing. The deox bath removes these elements from the aluminum surface. The load is then moved to the next rinse and is ready to be anodized. Step five is the actual anodizing. The word anodizing comes from the way the aluminum material is electrically charged. The aluminum to be anodized is positively charged or made the anode. The cathodes in the tank are negatively charged electrodes lining the tank walls. While the load is in the tank, power is applied to the aluminum. The oxygen ions in the bath are negatively charged and are attracted to the positively charged aluminum being anodized. When aluminum and oxygen combine, they form aluminum oxide. The electrical current continues to run through the aluminum for about 25 minutes to generate a class one coating. The aluminum oxide is 15% porous and there are 500 billion pores per square inch. These pores allow oxygen to get to the aluminum beneath the aluminum oxide to build more coating. The architectural class one coating has a minimum coating thickness of seven tenths of a mil, roughly one third the thickness of a piece of paper. After anodizing, the load is moved to an optional electro coloring bath, step six. In this bath, tin is plated into the pores of the coating. This process creates bronze tones from champagne to black. Darker shades are created with more tin plated into the pores. LineTech also has a proprietary copper anodize that produces an anodized finish that looks like copper, but does not patina like copper metal. Step seven, sealing the aluminum oxide coating. At elevated temperatures near boiling and under very specific conditions, aluminum and water react and combine forming a compound known as bomite. The seal process hydrates the aluminum oxide in the pores, essentially swelling them shut. This step is critical to ensure stain resistance and corrosion protection of the anodized coating. The anodized aluminum is then rinsed and is moved to the unload station where quality is checked. Material is then unracked and placed in carts or cradles for packaging or shipment. As I said earlier, the aluminum oxide is very hard and the coating relatively thin. The coating is also very abrasion resistant. To illustrate just how hard, I have a penny that I will use to try to scratch the coating. The non-anodized aluminum scratches rather easily, but the anodized aluminum 
does not get scratched at all. In fact, the aluminum oxide has worn away part of the penny. Thank you for allowing me to explain Lintec's anodizing process.